Welcome to part 2 of the underwater drone series. Here's the new 3D printable underwater drone. In part 1 we were brutally defeated by the water, which is why there are quadruple layers of paint and a second toss, what the f- It's significantly smaller to reduce the displaced water volume, the motor configuration with two facing up and two facing forward stays the same, the groove here is for a rubber seal and the holes for 20 threaded inserts that will hold the hatch in place. I started by programming the BL Heli electric speed controllers and switched the motor direction from normal to bi-directional, which means it can now spin clockwise and counterclockwise. That's important for the steering of the drone. But Simon, doesn't the drone cost like... There goes my second liver. I just repurposed one of my old FPV drones. You can eBay the stuff for a value of two pizzas. But that's the ESE and there is the motor. And that's just a little weird because you need like a bunch of other things. Okay, let's build an underwater drone. In part one, this was the distance between the screws. Now it's literally millimeters. I then added the motors which have no problem being in the water. The insulated copper wires inside of them prevents it from going boom. We're only going to need a fraction of the power that the motor can output. Even the motors worth two pizzas have far more power than we need. Anyway, at this point I started working on the front window and carved the shape out from 2mm plexiglass. Now this $3,000 underwater drone comes with a 100 meter data cable that goes from the pilot to the underwater drone. And virtually every underwater drone on the market comes with one as well. There are several good reasons for the cable. It's very reliable and you'll always be attached to the drone if something say were to go wrong with the battery or if you get stuck you can always just yank the cable and get your drone back. Turns out it's not that easy to send radio signals in the water so having it fully radio controlled is really out of the question. Now there is a third option with this kind of drone and that's a hybrid between radio controlled and still being attached with the cable. With the underwater drone down in the water you have a cable that goes up to a flotation device that sends the signals over to you with the radio controlled transmitter. The next step is to take the 4 bi-directional ESCs and connect it to each motor. I also have a power distribution board that's going to be connected to all the ESCs. The speed controllers are all connected to the power distribution board. You could just do it with wires, but this is just way cleaner. Whoa. Jesus. Now, in order to have a live view from under the water, there is a camera inside the drone, a video transmitter inside the flotation box, and then a video receiver that I will be holding. This is the 8-pin connector, and I started soldering all the video signals, and that's the ground wires all connected. The PDB is powering the camera, and the video signal is going to the 8-pin connector. You see, the number corresponds to the motors 1 through 4, the FPV cam is number 5, do whatever with these wires, 6 and 7, then a common ground is number 8. Okay, the ethernet cable got 8 wires too, so I assigned the color to the number it was soldered on. With everything working, I glued the front window in place and could finally test it in water. Actually pretty stupid. I must say, I'm not too proud about the 20 screw solution, this takes too long time. Ever heard about the quick latch? I had calculated the volume and the 1.4 kilograms would have to come from the battery and metal we would add later. It wasn't a surprise that it wouldn't sink, but what was a surprise was the freaking ocean. Okay, I'm starting to rethink this entire configuration because it ain't gonna work. The removable lid idea is a good idea in theory, having it so you can Take out the battery, you can charge it, you can pop a camera in there that isn't waterproof. I have a go. The lid with a 3D printed seal and 20 screws. I printed a solid lid that's slightly bent from the heat in here. With the battery permanently inside, we can have a little switch and a connector on the outside so we could turn it on and off and charge it all from the outside and then seal it shut with this lid and epoxy. There is 0%, 2%. 12% chance that water is gonna get in. 
To rule out anything else leaking, I left it partially submerged for one hour and no water came in. So I came up with a way to charge it and turn it on and off from the outside and started by cutting two holes. I connected a XT60 connector to the positive wire of the battery and the second XT60 connector with a bridged connection. The backside is epoxied to hopefully make it waterproof. Call me crazy, which my doctor already did, but I wasn't planning on routing the balance connector of the lithium polymer battery to the outside. I'll just tuck it in. You don't actually need the balance connector to charge a lithium polymer battery. You can just connect the charger to the positive and the negative terminal. But that's why I have this connector here. If I do go ahead and unplug it, you can see the negative and the positive terminal of the battery and that goes straight to the battery. So I'll just plug in my Jeez. This is the on and off switch. You'll see if I give it some throttle The motors works and if I unplug it It's now completely dead the camera still working and that's because I have the power to the camera and the video transmitter all inside this box But you'll see if I plug it in It will turn on The two batteries are mainly for the weight to make the flotation box more stable. One of the batteries goes to the video transmitter with a big heatsink to delay the inevitable overheating. The same battery goes down to the BEC that takes the 12 volts and dials it down to 5 volts for the receiver. And that's where we have four signal cables for the motors, one FPV camera signal, plus and minus for the camera, and a common ground. And then we have a fan that hopefully helps with the inevitable overheating as well. This is just epoxy. The steering worked fine so I could add the battery and some more weight before sealing the hatch. Then I did some insane donuts in the water before figuring out that I needed to add more weight. I had to add 156 grams, so I went to find some scrap metal that I could cut. That's uh, close enough. PCBWay offers the best custom PCB prototyping services. But did you also know that they do injection molding, 3D printing, laser and CNC cutting? With their instant quote feature, you can simply upload your model, in this case a 54mm impeller for my electric surfboard. You can choose from SLA, FDM and SLM, which is a laser melting a metal powder to make metal parts. They also have an instant quote feature for their custom PCB, so go ahead and try it right now at PCBWay.com. Okay, we have arrived at the nearby lake that do contain water. So she barely... I made it so she barely floats, which means we will have to give some forward throttle for it to pitch down, and so that we can give some forward throttle in order to go down into the water. Uh, now here's the flotation device. I did put a rope on it, so we do have that level of security. I'll tell you this, it's very, very controllable. The good thing is that we have that weight distribution that makes it so it always wants to self-right itself to the correct direction. So it, it isn't too hard control, to control, but it's very touchy. So you give it a minor input, but the effect on the drone is huge. So we have to dial that down a lot. Now pay attention to this video here. That's torque roll. That's what happens when both rear motors are spinning the same direction, causing the underwater drone to rotate in an aileron fashion. And I can counter it because the configuration of the motors that I have, it only allows me to do rudder and pitch and forward and backwards. I don't have this rolling action. I can't control it. And so all we have to do is what every drone on the market does, which is having a reversed, reversed, normal, normal propeller in order to counter torque roll. All you have to do is go to mirror mesh and mirror Y, which mirrors the propeller. And now all you have to do is, is on two motors, you have to swap the connections so they spin the other opposite direction. That's So now they spin opposite directions, but still push water the same way. A quick test. Oh my. 
much better. Jeez. Dude, that was exactly what I was looking for. It's working so much better. Wow, it's going completely straight now. That's so much better. I can turn. I could also pitch up and down and give forward throttle to adjust the depth, which worked surprisingly well. There's a potato NASA difference in quality between what the GoPro records and what you see all the time and what I see live from the onboard video. So let me show you the difference right now. Now that's the GoPro, it should be pretty, pretty nice. And there's the quality of the onboard camera. There's a huge difference. So if there's anything you see on the GoPro that I don't see, don't be too... A couple of days later, I went out to the ocean, but it didn't quite go as planned. Oh, no. See, they have actually been a little fucked there inne. Definitely didn't overlive, I don't have a chance. Little did I know that it was already toast. You see, that's not right. Nu, nu är någonting fel, för nu går propellrarna utan att jag gör någonting. Det var fint. But I still wanted to capture something, so I threw it in, and this was all we managed to get on video. Now this is the Five Fish underwater drone, just an absolutely beautiful piece of engineering. Insane with six motors, it makes it so maneuverable, and it's even waterproof. I mean. What else could you really ask for? Holy shit. But you can also add things like this robotic arm that can open and close. I dropped in and found two crabs fighting. No one wanted to fight me though, so I moved on and found the fish. And this is what the live view looks like. Pretty soon we found trash, so we decided to pick it up. Depending on how the thrusters were aimed, it could sometimes make a massive cloud, so it was often easier just flying pointed straight down. We also found a can of Coca-Cola that must have been there quite a while. I did open the 3D printed drone and I could find some damage on one of the speed controllers. All the motors are almost, if not completely stuck. At best, this was success-ish. Check out the merch in the description below. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. See you again soon. Bye.